Math 1314, Tyler Junior College, section 1.6, other types of equations. Square root equations, single. But what, am I, what I mean by single is that there is only one square root in the equation. It's kind of foreshadowing that there might be more in the next video. For example, let's solve the equation of the square root of 2x plus 26 and then minus 9 equals x. The good news is, equation solving is always goal oriented. The goal being, get the x by itself. So as you proceed from the beginning to the end, you should ask yourself what's preventing you from, from that goal. In this case, there's a couple of obvious things. Number one is the square root, so we'll deal with that in a moment. But number two is that there's two x's. If this were not an x, but rather a number like one, then this would be a lot easier to solve. If there's only one x, we would have to isolate it. But there's two x's. So let's develop a, gener a general technique that will solve a single square root equation regardless of whether there's only one x inside the square root or a second one outside of it. So let's focus on the biggest obstacle, which is the square root. I'd like to make this square root go away, so I'm going to have to do something to it to make it disappear. But before I do that, I have to isolate it. So your first move, if necessary, comma, isolate the square root. Meaning if there's any numbers outside of the square root, or anything outside of the square root, get rid of that first. In this case, if I drop a dotted circle around the square root, it's not isolated because there's a minus 9 attached to it. So we need to fix that first. We can move the 9 to the other side. That's equivalent to adding 9 to both sides. And if we move the 9 to the other side, we get the square root of 2x plus 26 is equal to x plus 9. Okay, so we isolated the square root, but how are we going to get rid of it? We've kind of played this game already in reverse. In fact, we did some of it in the previous video. When we had an equation with a square and we brought in a square root to cancel it. Kind of the same idea here except in reverse. Instead of bringing in a square root to cancel a square, we can bring in a square to cancel a square root. So your second move is square both sides of the equation. Square both sides of the equation. So let's see what happens when we do that. Square root of 2x plus 26 in parentheses squared is equal to x plus 9 in parentheses squared. Ideally, the square and the square root should cancel. So let's do that. Cancel the square and the square root. That leaves 2x plus 26. But what about the right side? What about x plus 9 in parentheses squared? How should we do that? If you're thinking square the x and square the 9, stop. This is not equal to x squared plus 81. Why? In a previous video, I kind of gave you a hint on how to remember when you can and cannot distribute. It has to do with the order of operations, but written more like a totem pole. Multiplication and division having the same precedence, being on the same level. Same thing with addition and subtraction. But a general guideline for remembering when you can distribute, you can only distribute one operation across the one below it. Since addition is not directly below exponents, there is no such distributive property. So how do you square x plus 9? Answer, you write it twice and boil it. x plus 9 times x plus 9. I'll spare you the details. x squared plus 18x plus 81 is what we'll get when we foil and combine like terms. All right, I got rid of the biggest obstacle. The biggest obstacle was the square root, and now it's gone. But in exchange for it, I picked up an x squared which is not necessarily a bad thing because we have ways of dealing with quadratic equations. 
Step three, solve the remaining equation. You basically change the structure of the equation. Structurally, it used to be a square root equation, and now it's a quadratic equation, and we have to solve it as such. Well, being a quadratic equation, you're probably going to either factor or use the quadratic formula, but either way, we should get it equal to zero. We're gonna get this one equal to zero, we should keep the x squared positive, so we'll empty out the left side. By subtracting two x from both sides, and subtracting 26. That gives us zero on the left. x squared plus 16x plus, looks like it's going to be 40, no, 55. That doesn't sound right, except it is. And that leaves us x squared plus 16x plus 55 on the right. Feel free to use the quadratic formula, but I'm pretty sure this guy factors. Because the question you would ask yourself is what numbers multiply to get 55 and add to get 16? Well, I only know two pairs of numbers that multiply to get 55. 1 times 55 and 5 times 11. 5 and 11 also have a sum of 16. So this will factor in x plus 5 and x plus 11. And now we can set each factor equal to 0 x plus 5 is equal to 0, x plus 11 is equal to 0, giving us two tentative solutions of negative 5 and negative 11. Why did that man say tentative? It says x equals, aren't we done? Not quite, excuse me, not quite. Why aren't we done? Let's look at this fourth step, isn't the problem over? Unfortunately it's not because we did everything we were supposed to do except one of these answers is not an answer. Your fourth step is to check for extraneous, E-X-T-R-A-N-E-O-U-S. Check for extraneous solutions. In other words, check, check for solutions that are not solutions. There are some up there, this flow, of equation solving has a glitch. The glitch is there's a move that you pull off that allows non-solutions to sneak in and act like solutions. One of these is not a solution. Now how are you going to find out which one it is? Well, the same way you can check the solution to any equation. Take what you claim is the solution, substitute it back into the original equation, and see if it makes both sides equal to the same number. So let's check x equals negative 5. To do that, go back to the original equation, which was the square root of 2x plus 26 minus 9 is equal to x, and replace each x with a negative 5. So we get the square root of 2 times negative 5 plus 26, and then minus 9 equal to negative 5. Now at this point, this is no longer a statement, but a question. I'm not saying these are equal. I am asking, are these equal? And the way you can represent that mathematically is by putting a question mark over the equal sign, and which means I'm asking, are these equal? Now, don't do things like add nine to both sides or square both sides, like we did at the beginning here. Those moves are based on the premise that both sides are equal, and we don't know if they're equal. So doing those moves are not correct. So how do we check this? We have to work each side of this equation independently and see if we get the same answers. There's nothing to work on the right side, so it's just negative five. So now the question is, when we work the left side and when we also get negative five, it's time for the order of operations. Under the square root, we have to multiply first. Two times negative five is negative 10. We haven't added 26 yet, we haven't square rooted yet, we haven't subtracted 9. Under the square root, now we have to add. Negative 10 plus 26 is, is 16. We haven't square rooted yet, we haven't subtracted 9 yet. At this point, I can tell that it's going to work. Because the square root of 16 is 4, and 4 minus 9 is negative 5. Yes, negative 5 is a solution.
I'll put a box around it. But what about the negative 11? To check the negative 11, we would have to do the same thing, except to replace the x with negative 11. And ask the question, are these equal? So if we replace this x with the negative 11, and this x with the negative 11, we can now ask the question, are these equal? Let's bring down the equal sign. There's nothing to work on the right side, it's just negative 11. So now the question is, will the left side equal negative 11? Let's see. 2 times negative 11 is negative 22. Have not added the 26, have not square rooted, have not subtracted none yet. Negative 22 plus 26 is 4. We haven't square rooted yet. We haven't subtracted 9 yet. The square root of 4 is 2. Haven't subtracted yet. 2 minus 9 is negative 7. Those are not equal. Negative 11 is an extraneous solution. So if this were a question in a homework platform, typing in both negative 5 and negative 11 would be incorrect. It might give you a warning that make sure you check your answers, but that's just part and parcel part of solving square root equations is checking the solutions. Just going to check the time on the video real quick, but I also want to mention why such bad answers, or why a bad answer like negative 11 is stuck in. We did a move in solving here that was necessary but comes with a glitch. And that move was the square move. It was a necessary move in order to get rid of the square root. But squaring is unlike adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing. If you have two things that are equal and you add the same amount to them, they are still equal. For example, if you and your brother weigh the same and you each gain 10 pounds, you still weigh the same. Addition preserves the truth value of an equation, as does subtraction, as does multiplication by a non-zero number as does division by a non-zero number. But squaring does not always preserve the truth values of an equation. On my hand are two numbers. There's one on this side, one on this side. They are not equal. But when I square them, they both become 25. What numbers are on my hands? One of the numbers is 5. And what's the other number when I square it and get 25? Negative 5. These numbers are not equal. But when I square them, they become equal. Here, these two expressions may not be equal. But when I square them, they might become equal. Remember the extraneous solution, negative 7? Excuse me, negative 11? When I put negative 11 here, I ended up getting 2. But when I put negative 11 here, I get negative 2. 2 and negative 2 are not equal unless I square both of them. So, squaring both sides of an equation can take things that are different, things that are not equal, and make them equal, giving the appearance of a false solution at the end. So you don't make a mistake when you get an extraneous solution. It's just part of the solving process. Unfortunately, it's a necessary move in solving square root equations to check your solutions.